as a layman, I would now say, I think we have it. You agree? Yeah. yeah. Okay. On July the 4th, 2012, the particle physics community rejoiced. It was confirmed that they had finally discovered the Higgs boson. Uh, for me, it's really an incredible thing that it's happened in my lifetime. It's taken... It's taken This was the final piece in the standard model of particle physics, the framework through which physicists have understood the fundamental forces of nature over the past half century. To the public, it was simply known as the God particle. I think we all have to be proud of these results and I hope that they open a, very, a door toward a very bright uh, future. Thank you. During that famous seminar at CERN, scientists from the Large Hadron Collider's two main experiments, CMS and ATLAS, both confirmed the existence of a Higgs-like particle. I remember there was a lot of debate because July 4th coincided with the start of the big particle physics conference, and that's what we were aiming for. We were trying to get the discovery out in time for this conference, and the question was, should the announcement happen at CERN, the host lab, or at this big conference in Australia? They decided to, to have the conference at the host lab, but I was on my way to Australia to present results from our group. So I left my undergraduates at CERN and graduate students at the time. Um, the students were camped out in front of the auditorium all night, super excited, clutching their pillows, didn't get any sleep, hoping to get uh, you know good seats for the discovery announcement itself, and they made it in the auditorium. I was worried that I was going to fall asleep during the announcement and I really wanted to stay awake to see what CMS had seen. Are they confirming what we have seen in terms of the Higgs mass or not? Um, because we had seen a couple of hints for the Higgs that disappeared as we took more data over the past couple of years. So I didn't feel secure in this discovery yet. But I remember when I finally arrived after 24 hours of traveling in Australia, I was so excited. It was not a problem for me to stay awake um, and be glued to the screen, looking at all of the plots and having that excitement and uh, you know satisfaction, anticipation, um, as they're showing all of their, their results from CMS. It is a milestone. I think we can all be proud, all be happy, but it's at the beginning. And I think also, it has global implications for the future and it comes at the right time and I think we can be very, very optimistic. Thank you. The Higgs discovery was a shining example of the power of international collaboration and curiosity-driven research. Many hoped it would quickly usher in a new era of particle physics beyond the standard model. But after all that elation, the past 10 years in particle physics have been slightly underwhelming. So far, the Higgs boson has been disappointingly conventional. It plays by all the rules of the standard model, rather than do anything mysterious that would hint at new physics. In the 10 years since its discovery, we've learned that the Higgs boson is the most boring, vanilla version of all of the possible Higgses that we could have imagined. It's produced just as we expected and decays just as we expected. It doesn't do anything weird like turn into dark matter. It doesn't do anything that surprises us like turn into a new particle we never imagined. The biggest remaining unknowns is how much of its mass the Higgs boson gets from interacting with itself versus interacting with other fields. And the deepest question there is why the Higgs boson has such a small mass. Some particles add to its mass and other particles reduce it. But all of those effects seem very finely balanced, almost canceling out. That seems like a strange coincidence, one that we don't have any explanation for. But the community is far from giving up hope just yet. In April, the LHC fired up again after a three-year maintenance period, and it will now undergo its third run of collisions this time at 13.6 trillion electron volts, which is very close to the machine's full capability. Believe it or not, the LHC has so far delivered 
less than 5% of its potential data volume. So there is plenty of opportunity for new discoveries. If not, then hopes will turn to a successor to the LHC, and there are several ideas in the pipeline. The challenge right now is that these enormous projects are looking a bit precarious amid the turmoil from the pandemic and Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Japan is getting cold feet over its proposal to host the International Linear Collider, an electron-positron collider dubbed a Higgs factory because it would produce huge numbers of Higgs bosons. CERN itself has several other ideas on the table, notably the future circular collider, but that's likely to cost 10 billion euros and with all the other societal challenges, it remains to be seen whether Europe has the stomach for such a project right now. Another candidate for a Higgs factory is China's proposed circular electron-positron collider. China certainly has the economy and the construction power to make it happen, though question marks remain over whether China could foster the same culture of international collaboration that was enshrined during CERN's formation in the period following World War II. Despite the uncertainties, a new generation of particle physicists inspired by the Higgs boson discovery may take the field in directions that haven't even been dreamt of yet. Discover more about the Higgs boson 10-year anniversary and the future of particle physics in the July issue of Physics World. Information is available on the Physics World website.